All right, I think we got time for one more good page. Oh, I love give us give us a really good one. This one is perfect. This one is exactly what the saint that we in this room need. Sanity or Saint Drogo. <laughs> oh, Drogo, the patron saint of ugly people. <laughs> <laughs> Please oh pray God. for us. <laughs> St. Drogo. <laughs> Take away Dude, the beating of the ugly stick. What can you do with this? <laughs> oh. It's not a lot just to cry. work with. You just cry. We definitely need some miraculous assistance. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, you know, we're in Hollywood and it's a land of beautiful people, but... We don't fit in. <laughs> not, not everyone's beautiful, and that, that's okay, you know. But I think a lot of people carry with them a lot of... A lot of anguish, especially in today's world, about appearances. But Saint Drogo was he was he was born to a rich family, but his um, his mother died giving birth to him, and he didn't know that until he was about six or seven. And when he found out, he he found out that he his mother had died during childbirth, and he had extreme guilt over this. And then his father died before he turned eighteen, so he had this uh, just an immense amount of guilt and no parents, he took his inheritance and gave it away and decided to become a pilgrim to do penance for having taken his mother out of the world. So he was, he was pilgriming, you know, going on pilgrimages back and forth to Rome from Flanders, which is modern day Belgium. And on one of these trips, he caught a disease and it, it messed him up. I mean, it left him disfigured, uh, scars, misshapen. His um, intestines were kind of on the outside. Oh, man. Mm. He was a mess, right? Wow. Sounded like leprosy until you said his intestines were out of I, the I, body. Yeah, no, I think God went to the pain with him. Mm -hmm. You know, wow. not to the death, but to the pain. <laughs> it's Lord. like, oh. Yeah. So he was, he was a donked up looking guy, right? And he would go into village and he's very holy, but kids would be terrified of him. They're like, oh, yeah, right? So finally he went into the, uh, a village and they took pity on him. They recognized his sanctity, but didn't want to look at him. So they built him a, a small monastic cell behind the church. And he spent the rest of his life for 40 years living in this monastic cell, just being uh, ugly and praying. But they loved him. So he spent the last 40 years being ugly and praying. Of, hunchback right. of Notre Dame. Well said, Ryan. Life goals. <laughs> <laughs> He was just being <laughs> ugly and praying. That's right. <laughs> no eating or anything. Nope. Just Okay. <laughs> he survived in sheer ugliness and prayer. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right. So what happens after the 40 years? So uh, once the church built down, uh, I'm sorry, burnt. the church burnt down. Built down. That's right. It's impossible. <laughs> I know. St. Ambrose. Well, it could be built down. St. Ambrose. Calvary Instead of built there. up. So anyway, so the church burnt down and everything collapsed on, and it collapsed backwards onto a cell. And they're like, oh, St. Drogo's, you know. <laughs> he's not there anymore. He's not there. So they go and they clear the ruins and he's still in there, still in his cell, just hanging out, praying and being ugly. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, and he, he, so he, and they rebuilt the church, uh, rebuilt the um, cell a little bit nicer for him because there was damage, but yeah, that was it. He spent the rest of his life, um, you know, praying and, wow. you know, but that must it, have happened it, when he was young. If yeah. he spent 40 years, you know, yeah, it was, he was like 18. Oh man. So, you know, but him, his, his ugliness was not, um, it, it was not a societal standard. He had disfigurement. Yeah. And, and that's, I think a very, there, there's a lot of people who are injured, um, who have disfigurements and, and they need a patron yeah. saint like this, but there's also people carrying around so much angst and so much dissatisfaction with their looks because their culture places so much importance on physical appearance. Right. I mean, we're here in Hollywood and that's kind of the very center of it. And it's a pretty sad state of affairs. And I think that the example of St. Drogo is that he led such a beautiful life, even though he was kind of shunned and reviled, people still loved him. And he still talked about to this day when there's people probably around him who were physically beautiful, but no one remembers. But Tim, you know, a thousand years later is still remembered.